salutations respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. Here I am in Fitzrovia, London. I'm on Cleveland Street. I'm going to talk, talk about Charles Dickens because this is where he um, lived when he first moved to London, where the blue plaque is. Um, Charles Dickens in his lifetime was uh, surely the most celebrated novelist in the English language and therefore on earth because even at that stage more people were speaking English than speaking um, any other language such as French or Mandarin and said he could read it because um, the United States um, was uh, had certainly over 50% literacy um, in, in the south and much higher in the north and the United Kingdom was not far off 100% literacy at that stage even it was quite low level literacy in many cases um, blah 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 perhaps the only other country in the world which which had 100% literacy um, already was, was Germany anyway so Dickens was born in Portsmouth which is on the southern coast of the United Kingdom his father was a bureaucrat in the Royal Navy so his father didn't actually sail on the ships but he organized the paperwork and so he had um, quite a high-powered job and it was it was handsomely remunerated so John Dickens was the father of the celebrated author and he had over the order of a dozen children however um, he was a dipsomaniac and eventually um, the demon drink got the better of him such that he lost his job so um, uh, Charles Dickens had grown up in a large house they moved from that to a, to a smaller house and from a smaller house to an even smaller one and really they experienced such a such a abrupt decline in fortunes um, so they were nearly penurious by the time he entered his teens debt in those days was a criminal matter Charles Dickens was born in 1809 so um, his father was sent to prison for debt um, and just you can just see a little bit of the ruins of it south of the River Thames here in London and you were not you were not released from debt until uh, sorry from prison until such a time as your debt was discharged ideally your family and friends would take pity on you in your incarceration and that they would um, cough up well no one was ponying up so it was not going to be bailed out um, other, other people fled to France to, to escape their creditors. Obviously, debt's now a civil matter, but then people took it a lot more seriously. And that's why the financial system worked, because people wouldn't take on debts that they're irresponsible, that they couldn't repay. Um, now, but how can you go to repay if your family and friends weren't going, to, weren't going to pay for you? Well, you could practice your trade and profession from in prison. It was very lax until Sir Robert Peel, as Home Secretary, sorted it out. If you had enough money, you could live well in prison. A man, it was usually a man who was sent to prison, could bring his wife and prison and wife and children into prison and have some rooms and live well and have visitors and practice medicine from in prison, make whatever it was, wallets or um, shoes or carry on any trade he wanted in prison, even pay money to be paroled, to be let out for a few hours or a few days, mustn't completely escape. Um, and that was that. But anyway, John Dickens was not in these happy circumstances. So, um, and Charles Dickens and his family moved to London. He was little here. It was when his father had lost his, um, his uh, enviable position with the Royal Navy. And um, by the time Charles Dickens was 12, he had to leave school and go to work full time, working in where is now Charing Cross Station, which was um, a boot polish factory, a job that he absolutely loathed. And to, to, to while away his time in this detestable job, uh, he would let his uh, um, imagination take flight and various tales caught his fancy and he um, uh, read with avidity um, in his free time but he had to work long and grueling hours there in that um, ghastly dark satanic factory um, and so he was someone who was blessed with the most um, exceptional literary gifts and he became a journalist then he turned his hand to writing novels um, and he was a campaigning journalist trying to draw attention to suffering and injustice because many people lived in most um, lamentable poverty at the time and uh, many people were benighted. Um, uh, some children went to, a, to, went to a school such as, as was not worth attending. Now, the other thing about um, uh, Dickens is, uh, you know, he, he obviously made a great deal of money and uh, bought an estate outside London, the South and so on. Married had, 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 had lots of children, had a mistress as well. But uh, he, he um, had a social conscience and he always had a soft spot for the, um, the downtrodden, for the underdog. And so this is where he lived when he was um, six when they first moved to London. And indeed again when he was about 18, when he started as a journalist. And there's a workhouse just down this street. And of course in Oliver Twist, it features a boy who's given up for adoption um, in his infancy and he's brought up in a workhouse. So um, those um, 
who were impecunious could throw themselves on the mercy of the parish. And so the ratepayers, as the taxpayers owned a bit of property, had to pay for them. So the ratepayers wanted to spend as little as possible. So they made the conditions of the workhouse as horrid as could be conceived, that you would only um, uh, ask the, the parish to look after you if you were in absolutely straightened circumstances. It wouldn't be much better than the prison having to wear an uncomfortable uniform which is inadequate in the cold weather, separating husbands and wives, separating brothers from sisters, eating just a little bit of gruel, and um, doing particularly tedious and onerous work for long hours. There was really no joy um, or glee in their lives, um, very little leisure time, and trying to get out of it. Um, so uh, people sometimes were, were out on the street through no fault of their own, and they would be cared for in the, 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 care, the, the workhouse, okay, body and soul be kept together, but that was about it. There was um, no comfort or happiness to be had. Um, so Oliver Twist, I, please sir, I want more and all that. Um, anyway, what else about um, Dickens? So his, his, his novels are very episodic, you might have noticed, because they'd be published in newspapers and he'd deliberately leave it on a cliffhanger and you could only find out what happened if you bought the, the next edition of the newspaper the following Saturday. They're usually Saturday uh, editions of the newspapers they came out in as some people had a bit more time to read these things, not on Sunday. Sunday newspapers were quite contentious at the time. Was it um, the height of iniquity to uh, read um, something for leisure on the Lord's Day? Because people thought the Sabbath was the time for their religious observances and not for indulging themselves um, in, in their literary appetites. Um, so that was uh, Charles Dickens, who um, was a transatlantic celebrity, sailed through the United States on more than one occasion, and he gave uh, public uh, recitations from his work, uh, where he was uh, cheered to the echo after uh, he uh, delivered these readings um, in various public libraries, and he earned very handsomely when he was in the United States, but he was then landed with a huge tax bill by, uh, by, by the federal government when he was attempting to sail home. Um, the thing is because British copyright was not recognized in the United States so people could easily pirate his works and there was a bit of plagiarism going on but usually not pretending that they were actually written by someone else but there's no way to prevent it if someone did try and pass it off as their own work sometimes not verbatim but something that was strikingly similar so the only way he could earn money in the United States was going there in person appearance fees <clears throat> you know selling signed copies and so forth so um, he died at um, a relatively early age, in about 1860. Uh, so one of, his, one of his sons went to Eton. They were fairly prominent people, um, his, his children in that generation. So that is Charles Dickens, How the Dickens Should I Know. Apparently that expression predates him very oddly. Uh, you can see a number of other houses around here. So he was very much a London author, though he wasn't born here. And some of, the, some of his novels, they reference his various places around here, the city of London, and he invented Christmas as we know it. If you've read A Christmas Carol, The Ghost of Christmas Past, The Ghost of Christmas Present, and The Ghost of Christmas Future with Ebenezer Scrooge. Obviously, there's a name taken from the Old Testament. I don't know what it means in, in, in Hebrew, actually, Ebenezer. Ebenezer, well, he was the main geezer of that story. Um, and he invented so many uh, names which really sum up the character. Um, and uh, Scrooge, as you may know, is um, uh, um, an egregiously miserly character and mean-spirited, as well as someone who's exceptionally tight-fisted with every last brass farthing, who wants to, to, to work even on, on Christmas Eve and probably on Christmas Day, counting money because um, he, is, as Oscar Wilde would later say, would know the, uh, the price of everything and the value of nothing and is completely hard-hearted and is utterly sardonic and misanthropic and um, won't allow his, his clerk any coal and things like that. Now, um, he always writes about um, Yuletide as being a very snowy time, Dickens, but that's because in his childhood there was a, there was a, a mini ice age, a very chilly decade. There's a lot of snow around there. If you actually studied the meteorology, you realise it snows more in January than in December in the British Isles. But uh, because of that, because of Dickens's writings, uh, we, we got the idea that um, Christmas time is snowy, which is not particularly, especially here. I mean, there was not one flake of snow on Christmas Day in Londinium. Uh, so that's him. Um, obviously, Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge changing his mind. But in that novel in particular, it mentions various places along Fleet Street, that sort of area. So Dickens knew, knew London very in intimately, went to the old Cheshire Cheese, that very storied ale house with these um, underground uh, beer cellars where many um, uh, famous London writer found uh, refreshment with spirituous liquor. 
Uh, so that is enough about Charles Dickens. You should, you should dip into his works. Um, and it, it always has pace, and the characters are exceptionally well fleshed out, and he limbs the physical scenes, and the, 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 the dialogue, I suppose, is colloquial and uh, credible, especially bearing in mind the, the time when it was set. But London is, is a locale for almost every novel, or perhaps not A Tale of Two Cities. Though, you know, when he lived, it was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. Well, when he set that novel, anyway. Okay, I'll switch it off for now. So please support me on, on Patreon, on PayPal, and book me on for online lessons in English literature, English as a foreign language, history, um, politics, geography, law, religious studies, um, anything of that nature, and get me to edit your documents, help me with your dissertations, theses, coursework, or book me as a, as, a, as a tour guide in London. Thank you so much for that uh, donation of most extraordinary liberality the other day, and I need these to keep the channels going. So I'll give people credit on air if they want for donations, but if you wish to be anonymous, then I shan't say your name. Goodbye.